trees are tricky. They are not easy to paint. My name is Jason Skill and welcome to my studio. It's one of the subjects that people repeatedly ask me about as an, as an artist and a tutor. How do you paint trees well? The answer to that is hard work. It does take a little bit of work to be able to paint trees so that they look realistic or they have got some life in them. And that requires you to look carefully at nature and then learn the skills which will be necessary to paint well, from nature or photographs and then perhaps begin to develop your ideas on so that you can personalise the way that you paint trees and make them very much your own. This has been my own mission over the years to kind of take ownership of the painting of trees so that I can make them very much Jason skilled trees rather than them necessarily being just a realistic rendition of a photograph or the real thing. All of this knowledge is being put onto Studio. What Studio? Studio is my video education site on which there are multiple studio points, little channels of interest, and one of those is trees. And on that there's already 28, 30 videos on the processes of gaining more skills on painting trees. What am I doing in these courses? I am pinpointing aspects of tree painting that beginners and intermediates find it difficult to get past. Common problems, common stumbling blocks, common ways of, of looking at painting trees, methods used by multiple artists because they move their work forwards, and also um, observational skills and technical trickery that enables you to become a much better tree painter. I'm not necessarily just painting trees and you're following me stage by stage. Stage. These are very much lessons aimed at getting you to become a much more proficient artist. But you can't just learn to paint trees on their own. They are within a landscape, you need to, you know, to paint the sky and, and lots of other things that would go with landscape painting if that was your interest. You need to learn more about colour. You need to learn something about composition. There's courses on this as well on Studio. Let's have a look at something of what I've done which perhaps will inspire you to follow me in this process of learning on Studio. So this painting here is a picture that I produced in one of my outdoor painting classes. With these I go outside and I paint alongside the learners and show them the processes of how to paint stage by stage working from nature. It's fascinating and it's a joyful thing to do. But not everybody can get outside. So I do also teach about working from photographs, interpreting them. Here's an image that I did from a photograph of an avenue of cherry blossom trees and in this picture I've explored using watercolour and I've also looked at using touches of acrylic ink and gouache and also a little work, bit of work using a blade. There's always new and exciting techniques to try and I'm very happy to share whatever I learn with you on Studio. I also like to work from imagination. Here's an acrylic painting that I've done purely from imagination. When I say imagination, what do I really mean? I mean the experience of learning to paint tree pictures, all of the methodology that I've gathered, which I can put down to create an image, how to compose it, how to paint it, how to put it together. These are all covered in studio. All the kind of methods of painting so that you don't have to just rely on photographs to copy so that you can paint for yourselves from your own imagination or interpret photographs and rearrange things to suit how you feel the picture would work best. You may also notice that there's some quite strange and interesting pattern work within the tree and within the branches in the top section, whereas the background is more normalised. Here I'm mixing two types of painting, a kind of pattern painting and a more realistic painting. Let's also look at the colour. In the colour in this picture I'm looking at using predominantly two colours. I'm using mainly a blue, a darker blue, rusty blue or a paler blue and the contrasting colour is the yellow which you can see in the gold in the foreground or the yellow of the background. To understand more about this 
you can go on the Color Theory course on Studio, which will explain theory of color and help you learn how to use color in a more um, creative way. Let's have a look at the next picture. In this picture, I've taken tree painting and pushed it in a slightly different direction. Much more pattern, much more rhythmical play. So I don't want to stand still and always paint the same sort of pictures. I want to take my traditional skills and I want to move and, and make new and interesting imagery, which I'm sure you will too when you have gained these skills on studio. Let's have a look at the process of me painting one picture and I'll talk about some of the, the, the methods and ideas that I've used, which you may find interesting. So first of all, I've got a photograph. I took the photograph and it's pretty bad. It's really boring and it's pretty uninspiring. I'm sure you will agree. The tree's quite a nice shape, but the background and light and whatever isn't. Now, sometimes I use these in class deliberately so that people don't feel inspired to follow the beautiful photograph. They feel, well, actually, I have to do something more to this to make it exciting rather than looking at this, which you wouldn't want to hang on your wall anyway. So let's take the photo and then I've done a drawing from the photograph. So the next picture is a compositional drawing that I've done planning my picture. There's a course on composition on studio, which will explain some of the methodology of old style composition, uh, rule of thirds, um, the golden section, um, dividing things using squares and circles, all this sort of stuff which old masters used to do, and also some modernistic abstracting compositional ideas. And we were looking at on uh, the composition course. So I've drawn out carefully, placing the parts of the tree that I wanted and d discarding things I didn't want in the picture. Let's have a look at the previous one. It isn't the same. It's similar-ish. I've discarded branches. I've simplified it. I've used elements of the background and I've made the foreground perhaps more interesting. I've got rid of the, um, the fence. So it's not the same. I'm still looking, I'm carefully observing, but I'm, I'm tuning it with my knowledge and skills on composition. So let's have a look at stage one of the tree picture. So I've taken exactly that drawing and I have traced it down using a light box onto my paper. Why? Because I spend all the time doing the drawing to make it the composition that I feel it needs to be, carefully worked out through my knowledge of composition. Again, I'm predominantly trying the same coloristic balance that I was in the acrylic picture predominance of blue, and now I'm putting in a little bit of kind of a coppery color as the uh, lesser note. This is a common thing in, in color use. People will use a larger amount of one color and a smaller amount of another, about 80-20. It's a common methodology you'll see in advertising, clothes, you'll see in all in interiors. Look for a main color and almost a, a color opposite or complementary color that's then the kind of the, the little ping color that comes out. Now I need to work it up, but let's also look back at something of these lines. I've got some lines across the picture. Let's have a closer look. Can you see these lines that I put that are tracking through the picture? And you can see the same lines in my compositional drawing. So let's go over here. And again, I've still got the same in there. Same lines. Let's go across. And let's go back. Okay, so basically what we've got is these lines of incidence. And lines of incidence are something within composition, discussed in the composition course, which is about where lines move across a picture. And on those lines, you'll find that aspects of a picture are emphasized. This is an old style compositional device. And I'll teach about that and how that works on the composition course on Studio. So let's go back to this now. So I've done, a, so let's now move this on to the next image. Now these lines of incidence, some of them are now becoming bands of color. Is this realistic? Does it look like the picture? No, what I'm doing is I'm experimenting with 
could you take the lines of incidence idea and actually make it so it's kind of bands of colour? Do I know this will work? No, this is me experimenting. I'm always experimenting, pushing the boundaries a little bit further so that I learn new things that I can pass on to you in studio. So again, the blue is increasing. And if we look, for example, here, we can see that the amount of pattern work is going, but I'm still kind of working to my drawn out lines. Now let's go to the next one. Now I've made that so much more finished. Let's have a look at the top portion of this. I've taken the pattern work and I've really pushed the look of the pattern up. Right. We go down into the bottom portion of this. The trees at the bottom are far more intricately uh, drawn out. All right. Now when we go on to the next stage, the pattern has become far more clicked together. The background is more sharp. The top is more detailed, more finished. But look at how I'm putting little red, red marks on the points of that line of incidence. Let's go over the other side. Oops, a lady. Let's go over to the other side. Again, just notice how I'm kind of making emphasis points with colour in here. My lines of incidence again, with little dots of red into the background. Let's have a look at the whole, th let's go back in the middle, perhaps. The tree worked up, trying to capture that twisting and turning. And when you look at the whole thing, in an almost finished state, I may tune a little bit further, I've taken what was a very drab photograph and turned it into a quite interesting, and I have to say a little bit odd, vision of a tree. From this to this. Now, I'm not saying that this is a marvellous work of art. I'm really not. What I'm saying is that I'm always pushing, always trying new things. And that means because I'm trying to be an adventurer with paint, I'm kind of foraging my way forwards. And hopefully that's giving you more information, always more from me. So if you're looking for a teacher that's going to give you all the basics, all the solid stuff to be able to make you into a better traditional painter, but also take you from that so that you become more of a, uh, an interesting painter who can work independently from just relying on photographic imagery and somebody who can maybe begin to experiment and feel like there's, you know, there's aspects of them that they want to explore. For example, there's an abstract course now on studio where you could even begin to explore your abstracting and more free creative side. So, so much to explore, so much to see. I hope I'll see you on studio soon.